right, here we go. Mark up tight. And Lopes, right here, right now on GCU TV. Good evening, everybody, and welcome inside the GCU Soccer Stadium in the heart of Phoenix on the campus of Grand Canyon University for tonight's match between the University of Akron Zips and your Grand Canyon University Lopes. I'm Phil Katafmo alongside Luke Larkin and Luke. The Lopes are coming off a road loss to Oral Roberts, but tonight they're back home in front of these Havocs where they're 2-0. Well, they've been absolutely spectacular here at GCU Stadium. Expect the Havocs to come out and be very revved up and ready to support this team. Well, hopefully the Lopes will be able to take a big victory, and let's see how they're going to get to that victory with tonight's Sanderson Ford three keys to the game. Absolutely. First of all, they need to play through the first goal. They did an excellent job playing against Oral Roberts. Unfortunately, they stopped playing after that first goal hit the net. They allowed three unanswered goals. They can't do that tonight. Second, they need to limit the opportunities that are taken against George Tosseris. He's been spectac spectacular for this side. However, he cannot see more than probably 10, 15 shots this game and hope to come out with the victory. Third and finally, Ben Lunt has done a great job for their side. Lopes need to throw a lot of opportunities at him. He hasn't been very tense, tested this season, so if they can throw a lot of opportunities at them, hopefully some of them will go through for the Lopes. Well, hopefully the Lopes will be able to capture the victory, victory and go 3-0 at home in front of the big crowd here at the GCU Stadium. It's Zips and Lopes right here, right now on GCU TV. GCULopes.com. your purpose at GCU. Private, Christian, affordable, and nonprofit. Visit gcu.edu. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the GCU Stadium in the heart of Phoenix on the campus of Grand Canyon University for tonight's matchup between the University of Akron Zips and your Grand Canyon University Lopes. I'm Philip Katafamo alongside Luke Larkin. And Luke, we talked in the pregame about Akron and how good they are. They came into this season ranked fourth in the top 25, and they got a big win last week, uh, 10 to nothing. Huge win. And now they're here against the Lopes, who are almost, un who basically undefeated at home. Well, they certainly do feel very good after coming off a 10 nothing win. Very impressive by them. However, I think if you walked around and you talked to any of the players during practice in the locker room prior to the match, they don't think this season is going quite as well as they think it should be. They're not performing very well against ranked opponents. They've fallen from their rank. They started as fourth in the nation and now they're unranked. So expect them to come out with a lot of fire. Expect them to play very good soccer. It was a 10 to nothing win against Kinesis that Akron took down that school 10 to nothing, and now they're in Lope country. The Lopes looking to stay undefeated at home, go 3-0, and and hopefully continue the rest of the preseason strong. But before we get into all that, let's send you down to the field for a national anthem and prayer. Defender number eight, Morgan Hackworth. Forward number nine, David Egbo. 
Midfielder, number 10, Marco Micheletto. Midfielder, number 16, Sam Tuyega. Midfielder, number 26, Abdi Mohammed. In goal for the Zips, number one, Ben Lunt. Bless. Hold my sauce. Haters lost. And now, I'm a boss. here is Stop the starting like 11 boss. for your What's Grand Canyon University and And I'm dripped up right. Hold my sauce. Yeah. Midfielder, Haters number boss. eight, Alex Rodia. Forward, Private number flight. 10, Josh Trapp. Right. Midfielder, like number, number 14, like Jackson Shella. Hold my sauce. Hold it. You make you could tell by the walk. Hey. Midfielder, number 17, hey. Marco Alfonso. Hey. Never gonna take a loss. No, never gonna spill my sauce. Hold Midfielder, number 20, Alex Ramirez. Haters love. Defender number 23, like Austin Day. Midfielder and number 25, right. Mario Sandreo. Defender like number 27, boss. Brandon Johnson. Private flight, out of sight. Forward, number 30, Calvin he still got a defender face. number 33, Sam Gardner. Your goalkeeper, number one, Joe GCU is led by head coach Shellis Heinz. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we ask that you please rise. Gentlemen, please remove your caps as we begin this evening's competition with a word of prayer tonight led by GCU's very own men's soccer alumni, Jed Hawken. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for this beautiful game, for this community of love and support, for the gifts and talents you've blessed these players, coaches, staff, and officials with to glorify you. Let us compete with passion and integrity tonight. And in all that we say and do, help us point others to your son, Jesus Christ. And all God's people said, amen. Fans, please remain standing as we now honor America with the playing of our national anthem. The Star Spangled Banner will be performed this evening by Borgate Catholic High School Choir under the direction of Jay Eldridge. get you tonight's starting lineups brought to you by Dignity Health. For the visiting Akron Zips, we've got Paul Hernandez, Carlo Raichio, 
Marco Michaeletta. Thanks for being here. Have a good season. Have a good game, man. Marco Milanese. There we go. Sky Harder, Esna Kese, Morgan Hawkworth, David Egbo, Marco Michaeletto, Sam Toyega, and Abdi Mohammed. Pretty stacked lineup for the Akron Zips who are looking to bounce. Well, looking to go 2-0 and on the row. They beat a... They beat Kinesis last week, and now they're on the road against GCU, and then they go to VCU next. For the Lopes, it's pretty easy. Josh Drack, Jackson Jella, Marco Alfonso, Alex Ramirez, Austin Day, Mario Sandreo, Brandon Johnson, Calvin Kissy, Sam Garner, and Alex Radia, the usual suspects for the Lopes. Should hopefully expect a big day from Calvin Kissy and also George Tesoris, who is this week's WAC Defensive Player of the Week. Well, he's played absolutely spectacular this season, especially this week, especially here at GCU Stadium. The Havocs are ready. They're going to be behind him and help him as much as possible. Should be very exciting to see him play this match, especially against such a powerful team as Akron. Well, Akron is a, another team that has been reigning con conference champions. They are national champions. This is a school with a luscious history, and it's going to be a tough one for the Lopes. But here in front of the Havocs, here in front of all these fans, the Lopes are 2-0 and undefeated, and hopefully looking to make it 3-0. and Ben Lewin is the goalkeeper for Akron, and as we talked, George Tesoris, the goalkeeper for the Lopes. Lopes 3-0 at home. I forgot the win against Loyola Marymount last week, 1-0 thanks to Calvin Kissy. So the Lopes are looking to go 4-0 at home in front of these Havocs. Regardless, they're still undefeated. And it should be a good one. Don't got to go too far back the last time these two teams played. 2016 in Akron, the Zips took a 3-2 win in double overtime, but now they're in Lope country as we get things going. Hernandez with it on the far right. Jella coming up for defense. Akron kicking it around, back over to Hernandez. Belenisa with it. Kicks it ahead. Johnson looking to track it down. Gardner kicks it to Soris and he'll clear it. Drac. Jella tracks it down, headed away. Radia. Alfonso with it. Kicks it ahead. Ramirez on the far left. It'll go out of bounds, so Akron will take over. Well, not a lot of possession so far. A little bit of boot ball going on. I think a lot of nerves. Everybody's coming out. They're playing in front of a big crowd. The drum line is here. Everybody's very anxious to get going and play some solid soccer here. Akron with it on the far right. Rodia to Alfonso. Picked off by Hernandez. Garner looking to track it down. Safely gets to it. Andreo back to Garner. Garner looking for Alfonso. Alfonso with it. And it'll go out of bounds. Radia, Jello with it now. Back to Radia. Kicks it ahead to Day. Day looking for some space. Good defense by Melanesa, and it'll be a throw in for Akron. Hernandez will throw it in. Toyega with it, kicks it ahead. Kese back to Toyega. Drac to Alfonso. He'll clear it back to Ramirez. Ramirez back to Garner. 
Johnson. Jilla calling it for it downfield. He'll kick it ahead. Radia able to get it, trying to go through the legs. It'll go out of bounds. Nifty move by Alex Radia, but it goes out of bounds. Even better defense by Sam Toyega. Well, very strong play here by the Lopes early. Of course, this match isn't going to be a sprint. It's going to be a marathon. They have to keep the energy up as long as they can in order to beat this team. Johnson sliding to get it. Staying with it. Great job, Brandon Johnson. Drac to Ramirez. Ramirez kicks it to Alfonso. Back to Ramirez. Garner, defense swarming. It'll go out of bounds and zips ball. Radia with a steal. Kissy hustling. Kissy looking for space. Kissy, ooh, right into the hands of Ben Lunt. Good look by Calvin Kissy. That is a great opportunity to get early on by Kissy from the edge of the area. Puts that on net with a little bit of movement from right to left, able to challenge the net minder early. Of course, we talked about it during the pregame. The Lopes need to throw opportunities at him lots of shots because he hasn't seen a lot of shots this season so with a save percentage of only about 68 percent the lopes can get a volume of shots on him some of them are going to go through the shot in the back of the net and akron scores but i don't think it's going to count We are waiting for the official call. And it is a goal. So Akron gets on the board early, one to nothing. They now lead. I thought maybe the official had called something, but it, it was a goal. So Akron starting out strong. Well, this is exactly what they wanted to do. They wanted to come out aggressive and take the energy out of this crowd, calm everything down and bring it to more of a even playing field for them. Well, we know the crowd is a big aspect here at GCU. The Havocs are always out and about, causing as much ruckus as they can. And it gets a little tough when they get quiet. They got to hopefully keep the energy up for the Lopes. And hopefully the men's team, the men's will be able to bounce back and get a goal of their own early. Well, it's somewhat similar to basketball. You know, when the team is cold, you have to take higher percentage shots, bring it in closer. Of course, soccer's a little bit different in that you don't have as many shots. Ramirez sends one downfield. Drack headed away by Akron. Afonso on the rebound. Afonso with a nifty mood, but it'll be a turnover for the ha Lopes. As I was saying, certainly you don't have as many goals as you do in basketball, but of course, getting the ball in deep and getting opportunities on net effectively does the same thing. So look for the Lopes to try to get more shots on and more balls deep in the area. Ball thrown into Andreu. Lopes almost had a chance there, but it was kicked out of bounds by Akron. So the throw in carries us to here, which is Jello with the ball now. And it'll be a turnover for the Lopes. Hernandez will throw it in. Actually, that was one of the more rare plays we see in soccer. The attacker came all the way from the offsides position to play it well on sides, but it doesn't matter, it's still offsides. Mohammed with it. Kicks it ahead, great save. Sam Garner getting his feet in the way. And as a offsides call on Akron, so George Tasso Reese will handle the kick. Jella hustling for it. Radia. Taken away by Harder, kicked ahead. Kese. 
Kicks it ahead to Egbo. Egbo guarded by Johnson. Egbo the shot and deflected away by the Lopes. Good defense in the box by GCU. Well defended there, of course. Akron with a great opportunity with numbers in the middle. Lopes doing a good job shutting that chance down and getting it out so that their defenders can come back and play this set piece. Michael Leto will handle the corner kick for Akron. Michael Leto to the far side, header. And to Soares, picks it up. Throws it in. Gardner looking for somebody. He's got Ramirez. Kicks it ahead to Alfonso. Alfonso sends it way across field. Day will find it. Johnson, right over the head of Hernandez. Lewin will come pick it up. Maybe a foul on GCU. Alfonso gets it up to Drac. Akron still threatening. Lewin kicks it ahead. Well, very strong defense there by the Zips, of course. That's one of the reasons this team is such an elite program. They play a very traditional four back, but they're not afraid to jump up into the play, finish their runs out, and shift over the other three to cover the empty spot. Jella coming in to defend Hernandez. Elanesa with it, kicks it across field. Kesa. Just playing keep away now on the far right. Drag coming over to defend. That one kicked cross field. Kissy's going to let it roll out of bounds. Austin Day will head, run, head over for the throw in. Well, Akron does that so well. They're spaced very well. They're able to make runs off the ball and get open. And they really do use the whole field. Oftentimes, we see men's teams play very north-south soccer, making every move towards the net. However, Akron does a great job of using that whole field and playing east-west soccer. That's off of Kissy. Akron will retain possession. Michael Leto with it. He'll throw it in. Hernandez will throw it in now. Drac almost stole it. Drac a little shaken up, but he'll get up. No harm done for Josh Drac. Well, this is a solid opportunity for the Lopes. Decent distance to the net, but close enough to get a decent set piece off. The referee will make this a ceremonial free kick. So he'll push the wall back to where he wants it. He'll get in position himself and blow the whistle and we'll be underway. Jello will handle the free kick. Drac there, Day and Ramirez on the outside. Drac sets it up, punched out. Day coming over for it and there will be a foul.
Well, the Lopes perhaps getting away with one there. With no defenders back, you could see a booking for that. The referee, however, decides just to give a simple foul and we'll move along. Garner will come hustle down for it and get it to DeSoe Reese. Muhammad heads that one away. It'll go out of bounds. So Akron will retain possession. Still 1-0 here as we head into the 13th minute in the first period. Lopes looking to get on the board after a quick goal by the Akron Zips. Harder. Kicks it ahead. Kese hustling for it. Kese. The shot punched out, rebound, good defense. Blocked again. Drac will clear it. Intercepted by Akron. Alfonso. And there will be a foul against Akron. How about George Tesoris on that one? Well, he's bailed them out a couple of times. It looks like Marco Afonso is down. We got an official timeout. Afonso still down. Well, a good play there by George Tesoris, of course, doing an excellent job. We'll take a quick look again at that shot. Or at the, at the foul, rather. Not much there. Looks like they just got tangled up a little bit, of course. Marco Afonso, okay, though. That's the most important thing. He's back on his feet. Very strong play, though, by Tesoris, bailing his team out. Of course, the Lopes having a difficult time clearing the ball from the area. You're gonna have to do that in order to stand a chance against this Akron team who really is so strong in the possession game. Garner kicks it downfield. Jella hustling for it. Drac with it. Drac kicks it across. Radia. Alfonso, tripped up again, no call. Hedard, Kissy. Uh, now we've got a Akron player down on the field. Another collision. Yeah, Kissy just got his elbow in there a little bit. Walks over, lets him know it wasn't on purpose. Give him a little pat and move along. Good to see him back up and moving. Lewins. Belenese. Belenese with it. Kicks it downfield. Muhammad hustling for it. It'll go out of bounds. So Ramirez will throw it in, 15th minute, still 1-0. Ramirez downfield. Alfonso with it. Day now with it. He's got Jella. He'll kick it ahead to Jella. Jella back to Johnson. Johnson over to Gardner. Johnson downfield. Lopes get it back. Alfonso with space. Kicks it up to Kissy. Kissy across field to 
to nobody. I think he thought Jello was going to hustle into the box. And a good look for the Lopes turns into another turnover. Well, a good opportunity. Unfortunately, just a bit of miscommunication at the most pivotal moment. And unfortunately, they squander the opportunity. Drac. And it'll go out of bounds. So Drac loses it, but Akron kicks it out of bounds. Andrea loses it. Egbo. Muhammad on the far right. It'll go out of bounds. And it'll be a foul on the Lopes. Robbie, next white. Taccio gets to harder, harder. Over to Melanese, back to Rattaccio. Kicks it across. Michael Leto over to Hernandez. And out of bounds, it'll be Lopes ball. We'll get a substitution now for GCU. Checking in is number 12, that's Marlo Antondo. Antondo checking in for Alex Ramirez. Day throws it in, and it'll be out of bounds on Akron. Day throws it in to Kissy. Day off of Akron, so the Lopes will retain possession. 18th minute, still 1-0. Day throws it in to Kissy. Back to Day. Day trying to clear three defenders, he won't. Johnson looking to get it back. Intercepted by Andreo to Radia. Lopes trying to make something happen over to Jella. Radia with it again. It'll roll out of bounds and it'll be Akron ball. Well, an interesting advantage play there from the referee. He saw the foul. He didn't feel as though it had affected play enough to stop. Instead, he said that the Lopes continued possession, so he kept it going for them. Of course, the Lopes probably would rather have that free kick from distance because they only have two men down on that right wing. A little bit interesting there. I'm sure the captains will have a word with the official and try to get things changed up a little bit. One kicked ahead, it'll be offsides. Very well offsides, just too excited. Gets running long before the ball is sent. Fortunately is gonna make Tesoris run a little bit for it. Well, certainly not the start that the Lopes were looking for, not the start that they were dreaming about last night. Afonso, that shot picked up by Lunt. Well, good opportunity there for the Lopes. They need to get more opportunities on net. I believe that's, all, that's their second shot today. So 21 minutes, only two shots. They need to up that value. Lewin kicks it across. Header, Radia will pick it up. Day. Tasso Reese picks it across field to the other goalkeeper. Hernandez all the way ac across. Hitachio over. Toyega gets it over to Melanesa, kicks it across. 
Michael Leto to Muhammad out of bounds. That one thrown in. And it'll be out of bounds on Akron. Or out of bounds on GCU, so it'll be Akron ball. Lewins. LNA say. And one kicked ahead. Hustling for it. Michael Leto. The shot and cleared out by Gardner. And out of bounds. Well, strong through ball there. Lopes doing a good job, able to shut down the middle there and get it out to the sides of the field. Good job not to turn that one over as they had a couple of times earlier in this match. Jella now with it. Jella with some space. Hustling on the far right. Jello looking for a clearing. Jello tripped up, and that'll be a foul on Akron. But how about Jackson Jello? Well, he stuck with that all the way through. He didn't give up. He got fouled. He kept going. He gave it away. He kept going. He brought it all the way down to the corner. Wasn't able to find a way to get it across to a friendly head in front of the net but he's able to draw a foul. It was a great job. Now we'll set up very similar to a corner kick here for the Lopes. Corner kick up top to Afonso. Afonso kicked off a defender and now Akron will take over. Egbo kicks it across. Kese, the shot, out of bounds. Well, very dangerous there. You can tell they've practiced that a couple of times. Unfortunately, just doesn't connect this time. Very fortunate for the Lopes. Radia. Garner. Garner looking for somebody. He'll find Drac. Drac over to Jella and can't get to it, so it'll go out of bounds. Akron with it. Looking for somebody downfield. They'll send it downfield. Ole. That'll be a foul on Akron. David Egbo. A little bit of a shove there. Another foul against the Akron Zips. To Soris. Kicks it ahead. Muhammad will pick it off. Harder. Almost intercepted by the Lopes. Kese. To Soris, downfield, booming kick. Drac. Muhammad. They'll get it over to Lunt. Hernandez with it. Jella coming over on defense. Rodia. Johnson. Today. Day downfield. Kissy hustling for it. Kissy will get the offsides call.
So it'll be an offsides call on the Lopes and Akron will take over in the 26th minute. Akron with it. Lewin with the goal kick, goal kick. Hernandez down, downfield, he's got somebody open. Day hustling over on defense. Michael Leto looking for space. The shot deflected away. GCU strong defense again. Another offsides call on Akron. Well, how many of those opportunities have been generating from the left? Very strong, very impressive. The Lopes able to respond a little bit. They've seen it a couple of times before so far this match, so starting to catch on. In the 28th minute, 1-0. Lopes doing a good job keeping it from being 2-0. Michael Leto. Coletto with it again. Akron doing a good job of keeping possession against GCU. Well, how dominant is their side? Of course, strong on both ends of the field, able to possess so well. Kissy kicks it ahead. Jella hustling for it. Jella looking to make something happen. And it'll be picked up again by Akron. A bit of a missed, missed step there. Good opportunity by the Lopes, able to take the ball in the attacking third. Maybe jump on a defender who wasn't quite as confident or quite aware that a Lope was right behind them. Lewins will kick it away again. Elenese with it. Hawkworth over to Hernandez. Hernandez looking for Melanese. Coming over to get it is Ritaccio. Over to Muhammad. Again, keep away for the, basically the description of Akron's offense right now. Well, they're very strong on the ball. They have a lot of confidence. They run off the ball very well. They're a very strong team. They're able to communicate very well. Of course, everything is clicking for them right now. Their game plan, of course, to come out, score that early goal, and take the energy out of the stadium, which for the most part has worked out for them. Of course, the Havocs doing their part, slowly working back into this match. Hopefully we can see the Lopes follow the Havocs example and get right back into this one. Julian Armaroli will check in. Austin Day will check out. Tesoris will come get it. Tesoris over to Gardner. Gardner downfield, Jella hustling to get it. Amaroli on the right side, Jella to Johnson. Drac. Across, Alfonso. Alfonso. Lopes looking for a shot. And they won't get it, it'll go out of bounds. Look at Alex Radia on the far end with it. Just runs out of field. Well, just unable to hit it in stride, unfortunately. The Lopes are, however, able to get it out for a corner kick, so we will get a set piece out of it at least. Of course, we would have rather seen him get that in stride just out of his reach. 
Corner kick for the Lopes. Alfonso hustling over. Johnson keeping it alive. Atondo heads it, Jella. Jella tripped up, no call. Jella is still down. Offsides will be the whistle, and of course, Jackson Jella is still down on the pitch. So we'll get another look at it. Jella is up, though, thankfully. Wondering maybe why he didn't get a call. We'll get another look at it. Looks like Jella, yeah, he got elbowed. Looks like he just got shoved down. And perhaps a little bit of a push in the back. The official, of course, only about five feet away from it, so perhaps slightly different angles from up here. And using that camera angle, of course, it looked rather blatant. Of course, if we could call the match from here, we definitely would. So Justin Rasmussen will get in and Jello will come out. Rasmussen, the sophomore out of Las Vegas, Nevada. Out of Bishop Gorman High School. Atondo trying to fight for it. He'll find it over to Drac. Armaroli kicks it ahead, Rasmussen. To Drac, back to Armaroli. Armaroli, Andreo, Johnson now with it. Garner. Garner downfield, it'll go to Lewent. Akron retaining, retaining possession for most of this game as we head into the 33rd minute. Lopes still looking for their first, first goal. Akron scoring pretty quickly. Tesori's coming up and making a good play there. Drac. Akron absolutely swarming Josh Drac. Toyego with it over to Milanese. just unable to connect there. Akron doing a good job forcing the turnover. Garner hustling on defense. Afonso on defense. Johnson heads it. Rodia loses it, but Akron still keeps possession. Alex Canales will check in, Alex Rodilla will check out, so an Alex for an Alex. Uh, 
That one kicked ahead. Hedard. Still a, yeah, out of bounds. I thought that one went straight up. It actually went straight back, so it goes out of bounds. Corner kick for the Lopes. Drack will handle it. Well, a good opportunity there for the Lopes. They, as they continue this match, they are doing a good job of getting more and more shots on, getting more and more opportunities in front. Like to see some of those start hitting frame. Drack, corner kick. Kissy heads it out of bounds. Well, and he's not happy with himself. You know, he said during the game against Wisconsin, even though he was the one that got the game-winning goal, he was upset with himself for the header that he missed. So that's been a point of emphasis for him since that match. Fortunately there, he just gets under it too early. It sails well over. Johnson with the header over to Gardner. Andreo to Drack. Drack looking for somebody. Kicks it ahead, intercepted by Muhammad. And Akron takes over. Kese, the shot off of Gardner out of bounds. So ever since that goal, the Lopes been pretty good defensively. And we know in the women's game last Sunday against Portland State, or last Friday, I should say. They let up an early goal and ended up scoring two more goals after that. So maybe that same luck will find its way to this game, where the Lopes give up an early goal and then they get two more of their own. Well, hopefully th that luck is in the pitch here tonight. That one goes out of bounds. Of course, the women's team beat Portland State 4-1. to one. They ended up scoring two more goals. So, hey, who knows? 4-1, Lopes win against Akron. That'd be fantastic. Well, every head coach in the nation is very familiar with Akron being one of the very elite programs in the NCAA. Coach Heineman, of course, very knowledgeable that they're a strong possession team. They're going to get a lot of quality chances on net, and they're going to crush you with possession. So you need to pick your chances when you get them, and you need to finish on them. Nifty moves. Akron with an opportunity. So Reese will get it to be a foul on Akron, so GCU will take over. That was Marcel Zajac with the ball down on the in the Akron box. Had some good daylight, but the Lopes able to keep the goal away. Two shots on goal, three shots in total for Akron. Kissy unable to get to it, and it's out of bounds on Hernandez. Well, the Lopes, meanwhile, two shots and no shots on goal, so. Akron getting a lot more, a lot a lot more opportunities here in the first half. It'll be a corner kick for the Lopes. Josh Drack will handle. Well, and if there is a bright side in this, this is the third corner kick for the Lopes. More than Akron's two. Drack in the air. Looking for the header out of bounds. So Akron certainly with more chances, with more possession, but the Lopes doing a good job keeping them from getting too many set pieces down in the area, too many corner kicks, playing very stout defense in this match. Perhaps caught just a little bit sleeping there at the beginning. Lewin kicks it across. Header, headed again. Akron, Hernandez hustling. He'll get to it. 
Toyega up to Strachan, to Muhammad, back up top. Itachio loses it. Kissy almost had it. It'll be a foul on Akron. Well, good job by Kissy to come back, force that foul. Is able to, truthfully, that's just a foul because he hustled and he made a play towards the ball and was taken down. Good job by him. Lewins will come get it. So 41st minute, still 1-0. Akron scoring pretty early on. Johnson. Rasmussen kicks it ahead, and Akron will get a goal kick. Kissy. Andreo with it. Looking for Drac. Amaroli coming to get it. He's got Johnson. Maybe the Lopes can get something before the first half ends. Garner. Looking ahead, it'll go to Rasmussen, who kicks it in the air. Muhammad headers it. Well, and Kissy very slow to his feet after that play. I didn't see any contact. I think he must have hit a piece of the turf that wasn't laying flat or something. Still moving that left leg rather tenderly. Yeah, I think uh, Kissy might have tripped just a little bit on the field. But seeing him hustle around is a good sign that he's okay. Lewent to Muhammad. Two minutes to go in the first half. Lewins with the goal kick. Atondo. Johnson. Amaroli. Thirty seconds to go in the first half. Lopes looking for some. Looking for something. One's out of bounds, so Lopes looking for their last chance here in the first half to get on the board. The throw in. Kissy, it'll go out of bounds. So that one will go out of bounds, and we will head into the second half with the score. One to nil, a quick goal for Akron, and GCU will look to answer back in the second half. It's halftime here at GCU Stadium. You're watching men's soccer here on GCU TV.
Find your purpose at GCU. Private, Christian, affordable, and nonprofit. Visit gcu.edu. Time. It's time for laughter and for play. Time for celebration and adventure. Summer is the time to share moments and create memories. Time to make the most of the long days and warm nights full of laughter and light and moments to remember. It's time you slowed down, time you switched off and forgot about time. When we look back on the life we create, the relationships we've nurtured and the young ones we've raised, let this be the time we remember. GCU's online degree program puts you first so you can make the most of your time. Find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. Our armed forces heroism, courage, and bravery give greater meaning to what it is to be an American. Grand Canyon University honors you and pays tribute to you and your family. As a community, GCU celebrates your service, your sacrifice, and your commitment. God bless all the brave men and women who put our country first. We want to do the same for you. GCU puts you first with its flexible and convenient online degree programs. We salute you and thank you for your service. It is halftime here at GCU Stadium. A lot of the fans, a young soccer team getting in the action for GCU, and hopefully we will get a GCU win. The Lopes down right now, 1-0, and it was a quick goal by Egbu for Akron, and it's basically been all Akron so far. Well, absolutely. The Lopes needing to respond here. They've done a good job playing stout defense, but like you said, it absolutely has been all Akron. They are such a strong team on the possession. They're such a strong team in the defensive third, and they're such a strong team in the attacking third. Well, just in case you missed the first half, let's take a look at our GCU Hotel halftime highlights. We start off with Egbo's very quick goal right over the hands of Tesoris, and it didn't stop there. Lopes, of course, getting a few, you know, a few missed opportunities and a few a few players shaken up as well. It's been a pretty rough game of soccer for GCU. Well, it goes without saying it's hot here in Arizona. Of course, that brings up the match temperature. Bunch of fouls against the Lopes. The Lopes able to take quite a few set plays. Unfortunately, none of them have been able to be converted upon. Still looking to get some plays out of, or some opportunities out of open play. Yeah, Jackson Jello went down, Marco Alfonso, Drac took a, a little bit of a spill, but thankfully for GCU, they've got George Tesoris. He has been on fire since then, and the Lopes, well, they've had some opportunities. Drac had a couple corner kicks. They had, in total, three corner kicks that first half, and they'll look to hopefully convert on one of them. Most of those opportunities for GCU have been on these corner kicks. Well, and how about George Tesoris? He really has kept this side alive, keeping the match only 1-0. Great to see him playing well, of course, being the WAC player or defensive player of the week and very well so. Well, soccer is the only thing going on so far. I know we have women's volleyball currently going on in the GCU arena, but there is a whole lot of sports here at GCU. Some sports getting their seasons ready and some coming down to WAC play. For all that and more, here's Hayden Newlander with our Lopes Halftime Report. shine bright when they faced LMU with solid defense and a goal in the 63rd minute by freshman Calvin Kissy. 
This goal was Kissy's second score of the season to give the Lopes the win. Also, freshman goalkeeper George Tosseris played a wonderful game defending his goal from eight LMU corner kicks. While men's soccer played hard on the road this week, they fell to Oral Roberts 3-1, but are looking to take the win here tonight at home. Women's soccer returned home with one goal in mind to dominate on the field. Mackenzie Cook and Cameron Larson helped lead the Lopes to wins over Portland State and Cal State Fullerton. Senior Mackenzie Cook played her heart out, scoring four of the six goals this last weekend, and the other two goals coming on the field from Cameron Larson. The women's next home game is October 5th when they start conference play at home at GCU Stadium. Women's volleyball unfortunately lost two of their three matches. The women, however, are still going strong this season with a record of 7-5. That's it for your Lopes report. Back to you guys. A whole lot of excitement going around for the GCU sports teams. Of course, we got a little bit of a youth team going on there for halftime, keeping everybody entertained while we get things going. And uh, well, you know, women's volleyball is out in the arena right now. Their season's going pretty well. And women's soccer team got two big wins at home, coming off a little bit of a disappointing road trip. They beat Portland State. Then on Sunday, they beat Cal State Fullerton, Mackenzie Cook playing fantastic, Cameron Larson playing even better. Uh, and, you know, it's shaping up for a very, very good rest of the season for women's volleyball and men's and women's soccer and all the other sports that we are coming down to conference play. And, of course, we'll have men's basketball very soon and women's basketball, and then that's when the real fun begins. But for right now, we are still one to nil here at the GCU Soccer Stadium. And in case you didn't notice, or if you weren't familiar with him, athletic director Mike Vine was out there cooking up some brats. If you didn't get a chance to go behind the platform before the beginning of this game, you missed out. Mike Vaught was handing out some brats, some brats with Vots tonight. And we see some Havocs out there getting some, some early festivities, getting some food before the game. Well, of course, the Havocs are known throughout the NCAA as the best fans in sports. The university paying thanks to that, going out, giving them a little food, of course, being poor college students. Who's going to say no to a free meal? Yeah, some getting those Havocs nice and fueled up, ready for the game. Assortment of chips and hot dogs and brats. Everybody got a chance to say hi to Mr. Vaught. Some of the faculty getting in on the action as well. Everybody enjoying the fresh food from Mr. Mike Vaught. And how about that? Like you said, the school doing a great job of feeding those rowdy crowds, this, these rowdy Havocs. And they're a little quiet right now, but they'll be getting pumped up and ready to go real soon. Lopes still looking to answer from the one, the first goal by Egbo early on for Akron. And they'll be looking to get fired up here as we head into the second half. That's very difficult when you do let up an early goal like that, but the Havocs, known very well, they will definitely be coming back out this second half. You always see the teams jazzed up after the halftime. The Havocs will be jazzed up as well. Well, the Havocs will have to get jazzed up and fired up because we are, second half is right around the corner. When we come back, it'll be second half here at GCU Soccer Stadium. You're watching Men's Soccer on GCU TV. purpose at GCU. Private, Christian, affordable, and nonprofit. Visit gcu.edu. Our armed forces heroism, courage, and bravery give greater meaning to what it is to be an American. Grand Canyon University honors you and pays tribute to you and your family. 
As a community, GCU celebrates your service, your sacrifice, and your commitment. God bless all the brave men and women who put our country first. We want to do the same for you. GCU puts you first with its flexible and convenient online degree programs. We salute you and thank you for your service. Second half festivities just about to begin as halftime comes to a close. Lope still down one to nothing. As we get going here in the second half, youth team still out there entertaining the fans. And hopefully we will be in for an entertaining second half as the Lopes look to respond after an early goal by David Egbo of the Akron Zips. We are about under a little under five minutes to go here in at GCU Stadium. You gotta love the youth teams getting out there and getting some work as they clear the field. Some of the other players starting to make their way out onto the field. Should be a very exciting second half. And Luke, what are the Lopes going to have to do to get on the board if you could recap our Sanderson Ford three keys to the game? Well, we talked about it prior to the match. Of course, Akron flipping the script a little bit we talked about how the Lopes at Oral Roberts led up three unanswered goals. Now the script is backwards. The Lopes need to respond after letting up an early goal. They need to be the team to score the unanswered goals. Of course, second, they need to get a volume of opportunities on net. It doesn't need to be pretty but they need to throw everything they can, including the kitchen sink, at the net. Akron so strong in the possession game that if you wait until you find a perfect opportunity or a pretty opportunity, you just won't find it. And third, of course, they have to protect Tasseries. He's done a wonderful job for them so far. Only mistake was that first goal. He is the WAC defender of the week, and very well so. You know, he's played very well, but the Lopes need to do, and I think they have, they need to do a good job of defending him and keeping the opportunities in front of him down. Well, hopefully George Sissoris will stay strong. The current WAC defensive player of the week will have to can stay as strong as possible as the Lopes get ready for the second half, looking to bounce back early. Luke, who do you think is going to score the first goal for the Lopes? If you had to take a guess, a wild guess, I know we've had a lot of corner shots, so maybe somebody like Brandon Johnson or Austin Day, one of those defensive players coming in. Well, I, I, my money's on Calvin Kissy, I hope. Yeah, of course, Calvin Kissy leads the team with three shots on goal throughout the season he has two goals and he's really one of those players that doesn't give up and he keeps going regardless of whether he thinks he's going to get an opportunity or not of course that's how he scored the goal against wisconsin and that's how he scored the goal just the other day so i think he's a a good call of course i think josh drack with that enormous left leg on a set piece, we've seen him take tremendous strikes from distance. He's able to move the ball around walls. He's able to get it on frame from places where he really has no business getting it on frame. So expect him, especially if the Lopes are able to get some fouls out in front of the area. Well, we'll see if it'll be Josh Track, Calvin Kissy, or one of the defensive men as GCU gets ready for the second half. And when we come back, It'll be second half soccer here at the GCU Stadium. We'll be right back right after this. Our armed forces heroism, courage, and bravery give greater meaning to what it is to be an American. Grand Canyon University honors you and pays tribute to you and your family. As a community, GCU celebrates your service, your sacrifice, and your commitment. God bless all the brave men and women who put our country first. We want to do the same for you. GCU puts you first with its flexible and convenient online degree programs. We salute you and thank you for your service.
thunder in the heart of Phoenix. GCULopes.com. Teams starting to make their way out onto the pitch as the Lopes look to respond after an early goal by the Akron Zips. And Luke, we're hoping for a quick goal here from GCU. Well, it'll be really interesting to see how they change their stance in this second half. They took a long time. They didn't come out until just the final minute. And of course, you can see them there continuing to talk from the field. They're revved up and ready to go. I'd love to hear what Coach Heineman had to say to them. He is such a tactical genius. So expect big things from the Lopes here as they come out from that halftime. Lopes will start with the ball to begin the second half. Calvin Kissy will get us going right here. Atondo kicks it ahead. Looking to get it to Kissy early. And it'll be picked up by Lewent. Not a bad look. If that ball gets over Ben Lewent, that is a quick goal for the Lopes. Well, and that is a Calvin Kissy goal. Be able to get up there and score a goal that he really doesn't have any business scoring. Otondo will throw it in. Radia. Johnson. Armaroli, a little bit of a new look for the Lopes in the second half. Andreo to Radia, up to Afonso. Otondo hustling, he'll pick it up. Otondo across. Drac kicks it up. Andreo almost loses it. Johnson to Afonso. Afonso. Lopes trying to take advantage as much as they can. Atondo will look to save it. and It'll go out of bounds. A little bit of a lost opportunity there. But this Lopes side has come out very strong. It's good to see them doing, doing that and really being a very different team from that first half. Kicked ahead. Amaroli coming over on defense. Tripped up, it'll be, it'll be a foul. In a dangerous place in the field to give up a free kick. Looks like Akron will set this up slowly. And the referee will set the wall. Looks like it'll be Harder and Egbo, along with Muhammad back there for Akron. Well, dangerous to give up a free kick from very close, only the 48th minute. The Lopes will be tested early in this second half. Muhammad and Sky Harder. Muhammad kicks it, it'll go out of bounds. George Tassaris will kick it away. Well, not a bad look for Akron, a bit of a shot pass there, no one able to convert in the middle of the field. Perhaps a little too heavy, a little bit too quick for all of the strikers. We'll go out of bounds and hit our field mic, but no damage done. Field mic's okay. Johnson headed and it'll be a foul on the lope, so Akron will retain. So harder again with another kick. Well, the lope's able to defend one from the far side. Now an opportunity from the near side for Akron.
Harder with the goal kick or the free kick in the air. Tassaris will come and get it. Tassaris will roll it ahead. Kicked across Delore to Ramir Radia. Tondo will come and get it. Well, Tassaris may have been caught sleeping in the first half. He's done an excellent job here in the second half, blocking two very good opportunities early in this second half. That one will go. I'm really coming to get it. Andreo. Akron will keep possession. Padilla. Atondo. It'll go out of bounds on Akron, so the Lopes will throw it in. Otondo throws it in. Kissy. Radia up to Afonso. Amaroli comes and gets it. Kicked ahead to Drac. Drac. And it's bumped out of bounds. Melanese got a piece of it. It'll be another corner kick for the Lopes. Very well defended. Or excuse me, it'll be a throw in for the Lopes. Amaroli will throw it in for GCU. Amaroli throws it in. Akron takes it back over. Tesoris picks it up. Rolls it in. Atondo. To Alfonso, to Radia, back to Atondo, up to Johnson. Well, a lucky bit of miscommunication there by Akron. Lucky for the Lopes. Akron electing to take the very quick restart. Mohammed across. Melanese over to Hernandez. Hackworth out of bounds. It'll be Akron ball or Lopes ball. Harder almost loses it. Pacheco back to Harder. Harder, the shot. Tipped. Lopes will look to clear it. Atondo. Muhammad back with it. Second chance. High and out of bounds. Well defended there by the Lopes. Unfortunately on the clearance, pushed it too much towards the middle and it's picked off. That had been a foot lower though to Soros. It was very close. Would have probably been able to make that play. Mohammed out of bounce on him, so GCU will keep possession. Well, Coach Heineman on it, on his feet, relaying instructions to his side. Kissy, touch to track, out of bounds. Good defense by Akron. Well, good job by the Lopes to be able to take that turnover and turn it into an opportunity, no time flat. I think if Kissy gets that ball to Drack just a few seconds early, Lopes get a much better shot. We'll get a corner kick now from the Lopes. That one in the air. Header. Andreo the rebound. And out of bounds.
Armaroli takes it ahead. Gets it to Drac, Drac trips up a little bit. Lund. Dia, Andreo kicks it ahead to Afonso. Afonso loses it out of bounds. And it looks like Egbo is down on the pitch. Egbo's still down, hopefully he gets up. Might have locked ankles with one of the Lopes defenders. You know, despite the jersey, you never want to see anybody down on the field. Egbo, the leading scorer in goals for the Akron Zips, and he had six coming into this game, and now that moves to seven. 15 total goals for the Zips, and He's a big piece for this team, and he is up, and he'll walk off. So Egbo, for now, is out of this game. Very tender on that right ankle. Good to see him up and moving, though. So we'll get a substitution for Akron. Egbo will head back over to the sideline, hustling that off. Good to see him moving around. All right, and you can see Egbo, ma he made his way about halfway through. Kese will come in and check in for him. And uh, Tondo, trying to get it through Kese. It'll go out of bounds, so Akron will hang on to it. So we'll get a substitution for Akron. Michael Leto will check in. That one thrown in. Oh, he's trying to get a hand call. Garner. To so Reese. Kicks it downfield. Drac. It'll go out of bounds, and it'll be Akron ball. Drac just trying to drum something out of perhaps nothing. Tesori's doing a good job throwing that ball down the field, trying to force an error and allow his strikers to get a chance. So Akron will hang on to the ball. They'll get a throw in. 56 minutes, still 1-0. Akron leads. Lopes still looking to get on the board. Amaroli kicks it ahead. Headered. Johnson. Radia. Garner to Tesoris. Well, it's been a very different match this second half. Akron has slowed the ball down quite a bit. And they've really done an excellent job of locking down the midfield and forcing the Lopes to try to go to the air to get past that center line. Go out of bounds, Atondo will throw it in. Atondo. Tosses it into Garner. Garner to Soris.
Amaroli. Andreo. Delore looking for some space. He can't find it. Kissy. And we have another player down. And that's Kese who came in for an Egbo. Well, the referee very quickly reaching to his pocketbook and pulling out that caution. It'll be a yellow card against Mario Sandreo and I. Kese is all right. We'll take another look at that one if we can. We'll get another look at it here. Yeah, it just looks like Kese went up. Andrea went down and then Kese went down. So the slide tackle results in a yellow card on Mario Sandreo. Akron still with it. Threatening to so Reese. Gardner will clear it. Great job by Sam Gardner to clear that one out. Good job by the Lopes to get in behind their netminder and bail him out. He's been very good for them so far, but even the best need some help. Well, there is no I in team, and we know George Tesoris is a big part of this team, and he needs his team if the Lopes are going to get on the board and keep Akron off the board. Atondo to Alfonso. Alfonso. And out of bounds. Well, a strong run for him coming all the way up from that left back position, able to carry it past the center line and all the way in front of his technical area. Jaime Delore will check out and Burt Wilton will come in. Wilton, the freshman out of Benfleet, England. Tondo throws it in. Radia. And it'll go out of bounds. So throw in now for Akron. They kick it downfield. Johnson. Get it to Armaroli. Lopes will keep the ball. Amarillo will throw it in. 60th minute now, Lopes still down 1-0. Looking to get on the board. Amarillo, and it'll go out of bounds. Downfield, Armaroli hustling for it. Armaroli with the header. Lopes still looking for their first goal, Muhammad. And out of bounds. The Lopes are slowly building up the field. They're doing a fairly good job this second half, not allowing Akron to walk all over them with possession. Of course, Akron playing very defensively in the center of the field, not giving up that center line very easily. And so the Lopes looking to change their match strategy some. They've already moved from a 4-4-2 to more of a more of a 3 5-2, trying to get more bodies there in the center of the field, create more opportunities to pass through that center of the field that Akron is doing such a good job at locking down right now. That one in the air. Andrew. Muhammad. Out 
Akron threatening. In just a little bit too excited, so the assistant referee's flag goes up for offsides. Track to Atondo, to Alfonso. Muhammad will kick it out of bounds. Throw in for GCU, Atondo gets it in and it'll go out of bounds again. Lewis will kick it away. Amaroli will throw it in. Alfonso coming on defense. Muhammad clears it through. Yeah, it'll be a foul. Well, a little bit of frustration coming to the surface here for the Lopes. So Reese will send it downfield. Akron will retain possession. Akron still keeping the game plan of keep it away from the Lopes. So Reese downfield. Akron still with it. Lopes able to get it. Little movement now for GCU. Drack. Well, something Akron does so well is they make the field look and feel smaller than it really is. Doing a good job there to force Drac to think that he needed to force the issue instead of play around with some of his midfielders. Radia kicks it ahead, Alfonso with some space across and intercepted. Michael Little looking for space off the foot of GCU. Substitution for Akron. Diego Saavedra and Isla Isi coming in. Oh, 
Otondo will throw it in. Garner to DeSoris. Back to Garner. Andreo to Armaroli. Eastley, excuse me. Eastley. Downfield, Afonso. Kicks it across and right into the hands of Ben Lunt. Well, very good opportunity there by the Lopes. Able to move it very efficiently through the midfield. It's been something that's been very difficult for them this second half. Good to see them do that. Good attempt on goal. Of course, not as hard or as difficult a position as they would have liked, but they're getting those attempts on net. And that's really all you could ask right now. Of course, all they need is one mess up from Akron in order to pull this one to even. Drac. Lopes still with it. I want to roll out of bounds. So corner kick now for GCU. We'll get Jackson Jello checking back in for the Lopes. So Wilton will come out. Jackson Jello will check in. We we'll get another corner kick for the Lopes. They have yet to convert so far. This is their fourth corner kick. Or to be a throw in, excuse me. Jella looking for space. It'll be Lopes ball and foul on Akron. Amaroli downfield. Easley. It'll be Akron Ball. Seventieth minute still score one nil Lopes trying hard to get on the board, but possession has been the biggest key of this game. Rodea to Afonso. So substitutions for Akron. So Reese will come pick it up. He'll throw it in. Atondo. Cross field looking for Jella. Hernandez should come and get it. Drac almost had it. Maybe a foul on Akron. So Kese on the foul. Garner to Eastley. Amaroli, Hedder, Jella, 
Jello with a chance. Jello, good defense by Akron. It'll go out of bounds. So another opportunity squandered for the Lopes. Well, a very good opportunity there for Jackson Jella on the far side. Unfortunately, better defense by Akron, able to come out and kick that out. Not for a corner kick, just for a throw in. Alexis Kunales will check in and Marco Afonso will check out. Hi. Amaroli will handle the throw in. That one headed. Headed again. Eastley almost had it. It'll go out of bounds. Well, the difference of this match definitely has been that possession and an unfortunate early hiccup by the Lopes defensive four and George Tesouris letting up that early goal. And that's where we've stood since. The Lopes unable to get a lot of the possession, unable to get many opportunities off of anything but set plays. Akron doing an excellent job controlling the match, controlling the flow, and controlling the midfield. That one thrown in. It'll roll out of bounds. Ball be thrown into Tesouris. Tesouris launches it. And it'll be out of bounds on the loops. And if nothing else, George Tesouris, aside from his early hiccup, really has been the story of the match here for the Lopes. He's kept them within one, very within reach. Oh, Akron with five shots, two of which coming on goal, and very quality opportunities. Of course, that number is a little bit skewed. It doesn't really explain how good George Tesoris is because he comes out and he gets those balls before they can even materialize into chances. It's been very strong for the Lopes in this match. Muhammad with it. Lewin. Amaroli heads it out. 75th minute, still 1-0. Akron doing a good job of keeping the Lopes off the board. And on the flip side, GCU, since that first goal, has also kept Akron off the boards as well. Eastley heads it. Garner to a Tondo, a Tondo. Garner now or easily with it now. <laughs> Muhammad downfield. Good to see David Egbo back out there for Akron. Egbo, of course, went down with that ankle issue early on in the second half, but for the sake of it, we're happy to see him okay and out on the field as now the Lopes have somebody down. And what an important player David Egbo is for the Akron Zips. There's seven goals on the season, one of which coming earlier in this match three assists, very big presence on the field for this team. Marios Andreo. Andreos was the player down. Andreo making his way off the field. So we'll get a substitution for the Lopes as Andreo makes his way off.
You know, some fun history for you. The, this is the eighth time in program history that Akron has played against the WAC Conference. They've played against them. This is the second time they've played against a WAC rival this season. The first time was against number 24 Seattle on September 7th, where they lost 2-1. to one. Their combined total against the WAC, 5-2. and two. Hopefully, maybe by the end of the night, 5-3. and three. I'm Keeping my hopes up. Well, anything can happen. It is only a one goal game. A yeah, very close game. Last time this one went into double overtime. This That time it was in Akron. Lopes did lose that one 3-2. Easley down now on the field. A little bit of an awkward slide. But he will pop right back up and shake it off. And so will his opponent. That's number 17, Joe Korb. They both seem to be okay. Well, a good defensive play. Just came in a little bit awkward. You know, perhaps made contact and went down hard against on the ground. Certainly can't feel good. Muhammad with the corner kick in the air. And out of bounds. Julian. Austin Day will check in. Jaime Delore will also check in. Diego Saavedra will check out. Hey, hey, East Lake can't walk. And Eastley is still on the pitch. And he's having a lot of difficulty getting off the pitch. Johnson will check in for Armaroli and training staff gonna head over to Isa Eastley. He I thought it looked like he popped back up from that injury, but or from that spill, and now it seems to be a little bit more than that. We'll keep an eye on him. Atondo to Delore. It'll be a foul on the Lopes. Garner not liking it. Day hustling over. Akron going quick as possible. Trying to catch the Lopes sleeping. Drack hustling. Drack trying to make something happen. Drack up top. Canales gets it over to Atondo. Rasmussen in the air, headered, out of bounds. Well, good opportunity there by that man. It started with him getting down the field, following a ball that fortunately got through able to play around with it and get the header at the end unfortunately just not able to get all of it and so it runs out for a goal kick but now the referee has stopped the match to it looks like a, a gcu player is down yeah, on the pitch that's marlon atondo he's one a little, little bit of an ankle issue but he's trying to walk it off well, Alex Ramirez assumingly will check in for Atondo. Easley's still down on that opposite end. Training staff making their way over to him. It's been a very, very strange game. A lot of guys going down with, with some very similar issues. Well, certainly i not entirely certain if the ground is harder or, or what's going on. It did rain a couple days ago. Maybe that plays a little bit in it. And it has been colder tonight. You know, usually this time of year we are still in the 100 degrees. Today, getting down into the 90s. But it, it's been on both sides, too. Akron as well have been going down with, with some weird ankle issues. Johnson to Gardner. And I don't know. It just a, it's a little strange. Radia. Well, and I'm sure Coach Heineman will have that same conversation with the groundskeepers to try to figure out if something was different, if they can fix it for the next match. 
the shot. Oh, great save. Tassarice again. Well, Tassarice able to get that left hand out and deny a clear goal with an Akron striker right in front of the gaping net. Great job by him to keep this match 1-0. Akron now threatening the shot. Off the crossbar. Johnson will head it out. Well, very close there. That one went bar down but stayed out. Marcel Zajac almost had another goal for Akron and thankfully the 12th man, AKA the crossbar says no thanks. Another shot at goal. There's a foul, there's a whistle before the shot. If not, David Egbo would have had his second goal of the night. And he's a little shaken up again. Well, he just jumped in a little bit too early. Fortunate for the Lopes. Egbo, okay. Sori sends it downfield. It'll go out of bounds and it will be Akron ball. 81st minute still 1-0, almost 2-0. Thankfully that one called back. Well this here is something interesting to me. The GCU bench getting upset because of that throw in being walked too far up the field. Though in this 11th hour, you'd almost rather him get the ball back in play regardless of where. Garner will throw it in. Drack. Radia. Radia crosses it today. To Johnson. Tasso Reese. Lunt will take a few more seconds off the clock and let it get a little deeper in the box. Now he'll pick it up. Well, that's a very smart soccer play. Just sees that there, were, there was not any GCU strikers coming down the field on him. So he'll stand over it, let a couple seconds tick off the clock and get right back at it. Delore. That one will go out of bounds. Of course, Jaime Delore, the hero in the Creighton game with a bicycle kick to basically give the Lopes the go-ahead goal. Well, something that the Lopes do very well is they don't give up. Jaime Delore was able to follow a ball in. That should have been a simple play by the Creighton net netminder, but he flubbed the clearance, put it right on the foot of Delore, was able to make an impressive play and put it over his head into the open net. Rasmussen kept checks out and Afonso checks back in. And another throw in for the Lopes. Thrown into Gardner. Gardner across to Radia and intercepted. Gardner coming to get it. Over to Tissot Reese. Tissot Reese. To Johnson. Johnson gets it today. Off the foot looking for Jella. Jella's going to have to hustle. And it'll be Akron ball. Well, just too heavy there by the striker. Hits the defender rather squarely, but the result is the same. Either have a goal kick or a free kick from the corner. Personally, I'd rather have the free kick from the corner because it says that the goalie can only play it from there. So he'll be forced to distribute from the left side. We gotta assume if GCU can get on top of one and send one downfield before Lewin gets back to the goal.
Kick back to Lewin. 85th minute now here in the second half. Garner to Tesoris. Tesoris booms it downfield. Delore hustling for it. Well, but the run was off sides. Delore just too excited. Akron very strong back four. They're really able to make the field much smaller. They push up and have a very strong trap. Unfortunately, Delore falls for that trap there. Kicked across. Akron threatening. Ed Bow. Another shot blocked by GCU. Alfonso. Off of Alfonso, and uh, Akron will hang on to possession. Well, very well defended there. Egbo with plenty of time in the area, even in the goal area. But the Lopes able to keep the ball out of the back of the net. Muhammad will throw it in. Egbo. Looking for space. Gardner will let Tesoris pick it up. Well, the Akron technical area looking for a penalty kick there. The referee very adamant. Waves it down. Day. Johnson. Cross to Afonso. R Ramirez kicks it up to Afonso. Back to Ramirez. Ramirez. Ramirez across. Alfonso hustling for it. Ramirez. Rodia. Johnson now. Lopes running out of time. Garner. Kicks it ahead. Alfonso offsides. Well, good opportunities by the Lopes. They're not backing down, even with the clock slowly dwindling. They're doing a good job being aggressive, getting into the attacking third, and getting some quality chances. Eighty-eighth minute in the second half. Ramirez heads it out. Akron will keep possession. Lopes under a minute to score. Try to tie this thing up and send it into overtime. Headed out of bounds. Ramirez will have to work quick. He'll throw it in. Headed out again. Lopes working their way up the field slowly. Kissy will check in. Delore will check out. Ramirez to Kissy. He'll head it. Afonso to Johnson. Johnson cross field. He's got Day. Day to Radia. 30 seconds now. That one will roll. 10 seconds now for GCU. Do they have any magic left in them? It'll sail out of bounds and that will do it. The streak will end at three for the Lopes, but an impressive game.
against a very good Akron Zips team. The Lopes lose at home 1-0 off a early goal by David Egbo. Got to say, though, GCU, a hard-fought game. They played incredibly well after that initial goal. But for the most part, Akron basically had him. Well, very difficult there to let up that early goal. Of course, that man right there, George Tesoris, unhappy with himself. But he will be our GCU golf course player of the game. He did an excellent job playing in the back with two saves, playing the whole match, of course. He'd love to have that first five minutes back. Yeah, great play by George Tesoris. And there's a reason why he is the reigning WAC defensive player of the week. And the Lopes will walk away with a loss at home, but will hopefully carry this into the next game where they go on a little road trip to San Antonio, Texas to take on Encarnte Ward and hopefully bounce back from this. Men's soccer returns next Friday to start WAC play against CSU Bakersfield. Tune in to see the Lopes take on the Roadrunners and experience GCU's Run to Fight Cancer Night. Don't forget to follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, and subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash GCU. The Lopes will look to bounce back and then head come right back here on the 28th. For Luke Larkin, for the entire team here at GCU TV, I'm Philip Katafimo wishing you a happy Thursday night. Have a great night. And go Lopes.